Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today I'd like to demonstrate the basic usage of the Fetch API. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Fetch was essentially developed to replace Ajax. And the main difference between Ajax and Fetch is that Ajax uses callbacks whereas Fetch uses the newer promises. Okay, so it's actually a lot easier to make a request using Fetch and you'll see why in this video. So we're going to see one example and that will be fetching some text using the fetch API. So inside my text editor, we have here a decode.txt text file in the same directory as my index file. Inside here we have some text, subscribe to decode. Okay, so we're gonna get this text using fetch. All right, so inside the index.html file, we can begin by making a call to the fetch function. All right, so we're going to type out here, fetch. All right, cool. Inside here, we're going to pass in the URL. This will be decode.txt. Okay, so this will return you a promise. And promise has two methods, then and catch. So when the response comes back, we're going to execute this function right here. This will, this will take in a response. Okay, so response is a new object, part of the fetch API, containing a few useful methods um, for the API. Okay, so from here, we're going to return a new promise. This promise is going to come from response.text. So text is a method on the response that's going to convert your, um, your response body, which in this case is going to be this text right here, it's going to basically convert it into text or try to interpret it as text. Okay, so it should be quite easy in this case because it is actually text. All right. So anyway, when the response, sorry, when the when the text gets you know retrieved, we're going to run this function inside here. So um, we're going to say then and pass a function into here. This will have the actual text as the first argument. So this text here is the physical, um, you know, return value from this method. So this is the physical string containing the text. Okay, so we're going to say console.log here and put text inside there. So we're going to log out the text. If anything went wrong during that process, we can then catch. All right, this function here accepts an error object as um, as the argument, we can then simply console.error and pass in error here. So we can see here that in this whole process, um, your action when the response comes back is inside this middle function right here. So we'll log out the text. Okay. So I can now save this and refresh my browser. Inside the console, we get subscribe to decode. So it worked and it was only about six lines of code. So we can now explore this catch. So when something went wrong, or when something goes wrong, um, this will be executed. So just keep in mind that a 404 not found, so if I were to say one decode, which does not exist, if we do this, this does not run. So a 404 in fetch isn't considered to be an error. So I can save this and refresh, and we do get the standard error up here, but we actually get printed out to the console the response from the server. So the simple object not found Apache message. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, to actually demonstrate this catch, I'm going to put this back to decode.txt and wrap all of this inside a function. We can call this one decode, for example. Okay, so let's put all of this inside here. And now when the page loads up, I'm going to run the decode function. But before that, I'm going to disable the network using um, the Chrome DevTools. So basically, we're going to go offline to see the catch of the fetch request. So um, let's now go inside the network tab here and just disable or just go offline. Okay. And now the fetch will fail. So we can call the decode function. And we see here, we get 
type error failed to fetch and that is in our catch function right there all right and that is the basic usage of the fetch api thanks for watching and i'll see you later